rather on post-treatment method of shunt fiber, which was already introduced by two, speaker, two previous speakers. But it would be great if you take a look at how we approach in our own way. So this is the content. So first, let me briefly introduce direct spinning method, and then I will introduce highly efficient densification method that can be applied for lab and industrial scale produced CNT fiber. Following that, I will share our recent result of densification process, which include continuous process and interesting result. So CNT fiber is macroscopic and hierarchically assembled CNT in the form of fiber. So it is considered a practical macroscopic structure for harnessing uh, outstanding properties of CNTs for while allowing for direct handling. Oh, sorry. So from this image, uh, you can see CNT fiber has demonstrated the ability to possess electrical and mechanical properties at the same time. I think this is the most appeal and advantage of CNT fiber compared to other materials. However, still, properties of CNT fiber are lower than individual CNTs due to several reasons. One primary reason is imperfect assembly of CNT and bundles during formation of fiber. There are three synthesis methods for CNT fiber. The first one is forest spinning, in which CNT fiber is produced from vertically grown CNTs on a substrate. And the second one is direct spinning, in which CNT is directly produced from CNTs synthesized in a vertical reactor. And the last one is wet spinning method, which involves CNT fibers using well-known wet spinning process and liquid crystalline CNTs as a dough. Each method has, has its advantages and uh, disadvantages, but from industrial perspective, this forest spinning has a critical limitation in continuous production. So, uh, development of CNT fiber worldwide are mainly focused on these two methods. We also KIST have been using, uh, have been studying uh, these two methods since 2014. So, as mentioned, direct spinning is the method uh, of simultaneously synthesizing and spinning the CNTs into fiber. So, this is one step process which seems very economical way to produce fiber when carbon conversion is high. However, at the same time, it is very challenging to control property and structure of the fiber because of very complicated reactions that occur within a few seconds. So here is the example of uh, direct spinning of shape fiber and keys conducted by Dr. Seung-Min Kim. Carbon precursor catalyst and co-catalyst which are essential for production of CNTs are supplied into the, this reactor through a gas. CNTs grow in the shape of sac, uh, as shown in this video, and this CNT sac can be assembled can be assembled into film or fiber continuously. To create a fiber form, a uh, coagulation base placed at the bottom of the reactor, usually hydrophilic solvent is used promote spontaneous coagulation of hydrophobic CNTs. And packing density, packing density is further controlled by a spinning rate, but the spinning rate cannot be increased beyond a certain level for stable production. So unfortunately, driving force for alignment and densification is insufficient to generate highly aligned and densified structure, structure of the fiber. So these uh, loosely packed CNT bundles ultimately deteriorate load electron and phonon tra transfer. So in order to increase properties of the CNT fiber, these uh, structural imperfections should be addressed through post-treatment. So there have been uh, various post-treatment methods such as mechanical pressing, cross-linking, and liquid infiltration. Most of these methods have been successful in increasing certain properties of fiber, but uh, it has been challenging to improve alignment and density at the same time. More importantly, these methods are time consuming, which compromise the uh, advantage of direct spinning. So it is highly required to develop 
on the uh, new method that aligns with time scale of direct spinning. So, how to achieve uh, identification in a simple, fast, and eff efficient way? Uh, several requirements should be addressed. The first one is rapid overcoming van der Waals force, and then very straightforward method for rearrangement within the fiber. And the last one is immediate restoring van der Waals force uh, to maintain the evolved structure. Uh, the last one is the above mentioned points should be carried out in a fast and continuous way. So we came up with densification idea inspired by West, uh, principles of West spinning, which involves protonation and phase separation. So how to protonate uh, to the CNTs? Uh, it is well known that when CNTs come into contact with strong acid, they behave like a weak base, so they can be protonated. So electrostatic repulsion induced by protonation is sufficient to overcome Van der Waals interaction. So among acid solvent that can protonate, chlorosulfonic acid, CSA, is known as thermodynamic solvent for CNTs. Uh, for example, when given enough time, CNTs in CSA can form lyotropic ly liquid crystalline phase above certain, certain concentration, like this image, which means that CNTs in CSA can maintain, can maintain their repulsive force at even, even at high concentration. So we set up a two-step solvent treatment process in a sequence manner. The first one is CSA bath for, uh, for protonation and rearrangement, and the second one is coagulation bath for phase separation. When a dysfunctioned fiber is immersed in CSA bath, it swells spontaneously. Uh, and when the fiber is swollen enough, we apply the stretching to rearrange bundles uh, with a reducing voice, and the coagulation step is followed to extract CSA from the fiber. This phase separation process is typically achieved by solvent, uh, ex solvent exchange uh, from CSA to acetone, as in the case of Westpin process. Finally, we can get highly aligned and identify the structure by immediately restoring Van der Waals interaction. Uh, in our case, uh, in our case, we do not need to make uh, a liquid crystalline phase of CNTs. We only need instant swelling uh, for rearrangement of CNT bonds within fiber, which means that if our process does not require much time. In fact, the in fact uh, the entire process takes only a few minutes. So let me show you the result of identification. Uh, of directly sponsored fiber with low linear density. First, we investigated protonation, protonation effect on the final property of the fiber. Uh, this was done by preparing three kinds of CNT fiber with initial similar tags around 0.05 tags and specific strengths, but different crystallinity. Because it is well known that protonation is largely affected by crystallinity of the fiber. As you see from here, uh, higher, higher densification effect was observed as the crystallinity of the fiber increases. So we selected a simple with the highest crystallinity and investigated process variables such as on automation such as stretching ratio and immersion time in CSA. And the, the property of the fiber was, ad, was analyzed based on alignment and density of the fiber. We found that stretching ratio should be maximized for better property. And alignment and density of the fiber increased monotonically as the stretching ratio increased. However, in case of immersion time, there was optimum point. We found that a one minute immersion time uh, was the optimum duration, while longer immersion time, such as three minutes, did uh, induce the negative effect. In case of alignment, it increased monotonically, but in case of density, it reaches uh, maximum value at one minute immersion, immersion time and then decreased with further immersion time. We, we speculate that excessive protonation induced uh, this was, Disassemble CNT bonds within the fiber beyond the swelling state. 
So we optimized the densification conditions. As a result, the density increased from 0.7 to 1.2, and alignment increased from 28 to 65 after densification. It is easy to observe increase in packing density from these SEM images by comparing. And additionally, uh, modulus strain curves shows a change in decreasing behavior, in decreasing behavior from multiple to uh, monotonic, indicating that internal structure of machine to fiber has changed from hierarchy to one body. So as a result, our densified CNT fiber exhibits very high specific tensile strengths around 4.4 to top of 10, uh, better than that of the carbon fiber T1000, and specific electrical conductivity similar to metal. Additionally, our CNT fiber uh, possess high flexibility with knock efficiency around 50%. The significance of this study lies in the fact that our process has high potential for scaling up because it is simple, fast, and efficient compared to other methods. So let me move on to densification result uh, of high linear density chain fiber. First, uh, why do we need high linear density chain fiber? Uh, Direct, direct spinning method seems very economical way to produce a fiber. However, there is a critical issue in mass production because only one spawn, one spawn fiber can be produced from single reactor. Production rate can be defined as linear density multiplied by spinning rate. As mentioned earlier, spinning rate cannot be increased beyond a certain level for stable production. So. The practical way to increase production rate is to increase linear density of the fiber. In other words, 6 cnt fiber. So, producing high linear density cnt fiber is gaining consensus in, the, in this field uh, to address this production rate issue. Okay. However, there is a serious trade off between properties and production rate because internal structure uh, become uh, be, uh, se severe, se seriously deteriorates as the thickness of fiber increases. As you see from this image, SM images, uh, there are numerous voids and empty spaces uh, indicating a low alignment and density compared to lab scale shanty fiber. So, post treatment is really essential for high linear density shanty fiber. So we applied our densification method, which was proven effective for low linear density CNT fiber. CNT fiber with six tags were used as spawn fibers and it was provided by JU Korean company. When we optimized immersion time, CNT fiber in CSA could be stretched up to 100% while left scale CNTF was stretched up to only 10%. So this sufficient elongation ratios allows more detailed and clear observation or change in internal structure depending on stretching ratio. As you can see from these SM images, the fibers, becomes, uh, the fibers become circular and you can see easily uh, the increase in packing density uh, as the stretching ratio increases. So we investigated density di by directly measuring cross-section area of the CNT fiber and linear density. As you see from this graph, the cross-section area of CNT fiber is dramatically decreased because of rearrangement of CNT bonds with reducing empty space and voids. Uh, also, linear density uh, is decreased as the stretching ratio increases. As a result, density of the CNT fiber increased from 0.35 to 1.15 for 100 stretched sample. We also investigated alignment degree by directly observing uh, cross-section of the fiber using TEM. As you see from TEM images here, <coughs> The cross-section of the individual CNTs become visible as the stretching ratio increases, which means that CNT, CNTs and bundles are 
actually aligned along the, along the axis of the fiber. Another alignment characterization pol uh, evaluated by Polaris Rama also indicate increasing orientation order uh, as the stretching ratio increases. Uh, also, modulus strain curves uh, shows a unified one-body behavior uh, after densification. So, as a result of increasing density and alignment, there was a remarkable increase in properties of shanty fiber after densification. As you see from this graph, the specific tensile strength and the specific electric conductivity increased by 260% respectively. When accounting for cross-section area of the fiber, the the effect of densification becomes more apparent. Tensile strength uh, increased up to 1.75 gigapascal by increasing factor of 26, and electrical conductivity increased up to 1.5 megajoules per meter by increasing factor of 10. Uh, in addition to uh, increase in properties, uh, this irregular and uneven appearance of the fiber becomes even and uniform after densification. So, for, so these results prove that our densification method is highly efficient for high linear density chain fiber. Even though the properties of chain fiber in this study are far below than uh, the properties of chain fiber at, at lab scale after densification, but it still shows a uh, specific electrical conductivity comparable to low degree engineering fiber and specific electrical conductivity comparable to steel. As a demonstration, our single fiber with 2 mg weight is strong enough to lift 400 gram and conductive enough to turn on LED light even if not. So I would say garbage in a set of raw. So, uh, and since our fiber possesses uh, mechanical and electrical property as well as high flexibility, there could be niche market to explore. More importantly, the significance of our study lies in the fact that this is the first report on densification of high linear density GNT fiber, while most of the studies have focused on low linear density GNT fiber. So last, let me show you our recent result of densification, uh, uh, which, is, which is actually about continuous process setup as a proof of concept. When we first reported our densification method, we suggested uh, the continuous system, which could be directly attached to vertical reactor. Instead, uh, we have constructed our continuous system using uh, already synthesized CNT fibers collected onto a bobin, like this image. So this picture is actual equipment that we have constructed. And this spun fiber is released from unwind here and then immersed into CSA bath for swelling and stretching, followed by entering an acetone bath for coagulation and then collected onto a bobin uh, continuously. We have examined uh, various process variables, uh, but among them, uh, the first variable that we paid attention was immersion time. Because unlike a batch process, the fibers are continuously moving, so there might be insufficient immersion time for swelling and stretching. So we investigated the swelling state of CNT fiber in CSA to figure out uh, mini minimum immersion time required for a pro uh, continuous process. So this is oh. so anyway. So this is a demonstration videos uh, of continuous process. So as I mentioned, uh, we first synthesize the CNT fiber with high linear text, and then we densify. CNT fibers, uh, CNT fiber, uh, we densify as sponge CNT fibers based on continuous process. 
It should be noted that uh, CNT fibers uh, in this video were provided by Kim's and it has around four tags. In this video, we collected uh, 50 meters of CNT fiber uh, treated for 30 minutes of processing time. So the maximum elongation ratio in the continuous process was found to be 30% for stable operation without breaking fibers. Uh, while allowed batch system, uh, while uh, batch system allowed 80% of relocation. Uh, uh, I think the difference between uh, the maximum elongation between continuous and batch system is mainly attributed to uneven uh, mechanical property of original fiber. Uh, additionally. Uh, Unlike batch process, where the fibers are swollen and then stretched step by step, these events occur simultaneously. So nevertheless, the properties are fascinating. Uh, even with 30% of elongation, the specific peak tensile strength increased from 0.8 to 2.67, uh, more than tripling, and the specific electrical conductivity uh, increased from around 600 to 1800. Interestingly, we found higher property values of CNT fiber in the continuous system than those treated in the batch system. Uh, honestly, we do not know exact reason for this. Uh, maybe uh, it could be several complex reasons or a simple one just arising from difference between manual and automatic system. <laughs> So, looking at the SCB chart, considering minute density and specific tensile strength, uh, with our current result, you can see uh, the direction we are aiming for. We, as you can see, uh, we have been developing our, our densification method uh, for CNT fiber with high linear density than greater than one tax to go in the direction of commercial, commercialization. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the current result is very meaningful from industrial standpoint, particularly when comparing with uh, Kevlar 49. As you see from this table, all values are higher than Kevlar, Kevlar 49. Additionally, uh, our CT5 projects electrical conductivity or property in absent uh, or property or property absent in Kevlar 49. So I say uh, I think that uh, the CNT fiber developed in this study uh, have have sufficient potential to replace commercialized engineering aramid fibers because our fiber has productivity and better properties than uh, aramid fibers. So this so this could be the first target for tapping into niche market that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so, uh, Additionally, again, uh, our CNT fiber projects electrical conductivity, so they can break into new market that aramid fiber aramid fibers have never explored. For example, it could be possible to create some functional body armor with added feature. So, in fact, uh, the most powerful application of CNT fiber is to replace copper wire. But the, electric, but the electrical conductivity of CNT fiber is far less than that of copper wire and it is even worse for direct response CNT fiber after densification. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we are attempting to create electrical wire based on CNT fiber in collaboration with this Korean company. The goal of this project is not to actually dis uh, replace copper wires but to identify and secure the essential technologies required when manufacturing CNT fiber-based cables or motors. Uh, for example, it could be insulating cut cutting technology for CNT fibers uh, and uh, develop a new type of winding design for motors uh, taking advantage of unique characteristics of CNT fiber. Uh, the goal of Key in this project is to densify CNT fibers produced from industry and ultimately create uh, CNT fibers that meet with industrial standard. For example, 
harness cable requires industrial uh, industrial specifications such as diameter of 300 micrometer and 400 mac megapascal megapascal. So to achieve this, we are working on producing very thick and densified shandy fiber as shown here. Even though the performance will be lower than copper wire, but it would be still an interesting endeavor uh, to see the performance of prototypes with shandy fiber. So, in conclusion, uh, this series of SM, uh, this series of SM images will demonstrate a uh, roadmap that we have been pursuing. Uh, we have been developing our shanty fiber uh, starting with low linear density, low linear density, and to high to high linear density, and ultimately shanty fibers with sheet fibers then with industrial standard. In the SCP chart, to go in the direction of commercialization, uh, we think that uh, there is still room for improvement. Uh, it might be investigating post-treatment conditions that we have not explored yet, such as you know, uh, extracting CSA from the fiber, or optimizing synthesis condition of sheet fiber specialized for densification. So these will be our future work sooner or later. So uh, these are the people who contribute to this work, and I, spe I especially thanks to Dr. Sung Mi Kim, another PI of our team, and I especially thanks to uh, uh, doctors from Kim's who are providing very nice shanty and spawn fiber. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for Ask you something. Okay, we have enough time 